What's up guys, it is Sports Talk with Geo here, and today we are going to be talking about what I think the Orioles all season should do, and what it should look like this upcoming year to have a better year to go past the wild card. Alright, so first off, we're going to be addressing the long-term future of the team with a player that is already probably the nucleus of this team. And Will is one of the top stars in the MLB already and is hitting the free agency market after this upcoming season. And that is third baseman Manny Machado. Manny has one year left on his contract. And we the last thing the Orioles don't want to do is let him hit free agency with money spending people. One that know him is in the division and that's the Yankees. If they don't get Bryce Harper, or the, they'll definitely be going after Machado. All right. So what I think the Orioles will have to do is lock him up before this year, because they already know that uh, of what I just said about next all season. They don't want that to happen. They don't like negotiating contracts in the middle of the all uh, in the middle of the regular season. And I also think they should not only wait. Um, they should not only not wait to get it done before next uh, off season. They should get it done before Bryce Harper signs his contract, wherever it is. Because we already know Manny went to the Orioles this year to. Mm, sorry there. To get a contract extension. He wants to talk about staying in Baltimore. And that is an amazing sign. Because we he is no... We, he, uh, 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 I am sorry. He is letting the team know he wants to stay here long term. And the city of Baltimore would love Manny Machado to be here long term. And I think his contract will look like it won't be the easiest contract to do, especially because we have other great potential prospects that we will have to lock up. And with the $200 million, almost $200 million man, Chris Davis already being locked up last season with the deferred money that it will be paid out over the next 20, now one, seasons. Well, years. Um, and with Jonathan Scope hitting the free agency market, Gossman and Jones in a few years and potentially potentially Britain we gotta keep that core intact while trying to get Manny Machado which will be a difficult no way they all stay but it would be nice to see most of them stay uh, and I think Manny Machado is the most important to keep out of all of that especially since he is a top three player in the MLB moving on to the next one is talking about this year's free agents and what I think. This year, uh, the biggest names that the Orioles have that are free agents, Mark Trumbo is obviously the biggest name. Uh, Pedro Alvarez is a vital, I wouldn't say vital part, but they say he should be brought back this year. Michael Bourne and Matt Wieters. Now what I think here is, despite the hype in Baltimore of uh, Pedro Alvarez coming back and how he should come back and we need to make sure he comes back to fill in that DH role, I strongly disagree with. Buck Showalter does not play Pedro Alvarez that much. What Buck should be doing is letting him walk, especially since he plays about every three right-handers we face. And he did hit, I do believe, 24 home runs this year. That's nothing to shy, uh, nothing just to uh, like look away and ignore, especially considering he probably, uh, don't quote me on this, played about 80 games this year. And But I just don't see he's that vital of a piece, especially since Michael Bourne is hitting free agency and we have Mark Trumbo. Now, Mark Trumbo did not do very well. Uh, out in right field. Everyone knows he was the best slugger in baseball this year, hitting 47 home runs and leading the league. But he should he be playing in right field? No. And that is why I say we should sign Mark Trumbo 
and let him know we're not paying for his fielding and maybe we can get him at a cheaper price doing that and in order to do that we would need to bring back Michael Bourne who would be brought back probably less than 10 million dollars we will sign him for his fielding and he will be a great number eight or nine hitter in the lineup and potentially two if he gets hot enough and if we don't bring Michael Bourne back Joey Rickard is coming back next season and a lot of people don't realize that Joey Rickard is going to be ready next year and he's going to be back on the roster now he won't be under the same rule 5 contract so he won't have to be in the majors so he could go back down to the minors which is a very strong possibility as Rickard was kind of struggling when he got hurt and he had lost his everyday starting job to Kim but we will get to Kim later now moving over to uh, from the Michael Bourne, Mark Trumbo, Pedro Alvarez, we would go to Matt Wieters. Now before the season, everyone was kind of realizing this is going to be Matt Wieters' final year. Caleb Joseph is going to be the starter from here on out. Well, it's kind of a different story now. Matt Wieters had a great season. He's looking like he gets some power back in his bat. His bat was really heating up that last half of the season. It was probably, besides J.J. Hardy, the hottest bat that the Orioles had throughout the whole year. And Caleb Joseph, the I want to say the successor to his catching throne, um, didn't do so hot. Played all year. Hit, I do believe, below 200. He didn't really play that much besides about a week when Matt Wieters uh, had an injury to, I believe, his wrist. And he played like eight games in a row. And he started heating up, but he didn't get any RBIs the whole year. His fielding was there, but it wasn't as good as we had seen the past two years. And that really opened up Matt Weider's future back in Baltimore. Especially since his agent, Scott Boris, had flew into town a few weeks beforehand to get Matt Weider's, well, everyone believes, to talk about Matt Weider's landing in the future. And plus, he has arbitration to deal with with his uh, probably biggest client the Orioles have this year, which is Zach Britton about his arbitration but Matt Wieters is looking like the Orioles should bring him back because I don't want to say to a long-term deal it could be to a long-term deal but I wouldn't want to say to a long-term deal in case this was just a down year for Caleb Joseph but if Caleb Joseph has a nice rebound year next year and we do bring Matt Wieters back this offseason we could trade Matt Wieters or Caleb Joseph depending on whoever's better what we could get and just basically whether that's there whether Chance Cisco is ready so we have a nice future there or we could even trade Chance Cisco which is a big possibility as I hear many teams are looking to get Chance Cisco since he has an amazing bat but it's just trying to work on his fielding so moving on from Weeders to Hyunsoo Kim now, Kim was a very interesting story this year. Coming out of Korea, what Baltimore was hearing when he came here was that he was one of the best Korean hitters in history, actually. And we it's funny because in spring training, he went like two for like 50 or something like that. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. But Baltimore was wanting him off the team. Tried to send him down to the minors. Uh, he said no. Got booed on opening day as he was making the run out. And Joey Rickard, who was amazing, looked like he just took Hyun Soo Kim. Just straight out of the conversation. But Hyun Soo Kim, especially when Rickard got hurt, showed us what he was all about. Hitting 302 on the year with four home runs. And one of those home runs being at the end of the year. Saving the Orioles season off of a two-run shot in ninth inning. Two outs against Robert Osuna to send them. Which eventually would send them to the playoffs by a game. If we would have lost that game, we wouldn't have been in the playoffs. Now, moving on to, I mean, I'm sorry. Kim's role with Rickard coming back. Hyunsoo Kim was 0 for 15 against lefties 
in the whole 2016 season. Buck didn't like to put him against lefties. Obviously, why he was 0 for 15. Well, with Rickard coming back, who specializes against lefties and is a way better fielder than Kim, I think we could very well see a righty-lefty combination of Kim versus righties, Rickard versus lefties. Or if we don't bring Michael Bourne or Mark Trumbo back, we could very well see Rickard as the everyday right fielder and Kim is the everyday left fielder. But what I strongly do believe is that Michael Bourne will come back and we will see Joey Rickard being probably the fourth outfielder to Kim Jones and Michael Bourne slash Mark Trumbo, whoever, we, if we bring either one of them back. And if Mark... Yeah, I'm sorry, Mark Trumbo plays right field or not, depending on the Pedro Alvarez situation, or if Trey Mancini gets called up. Now let's move on to Zach Britton's future in the Orioles franchise. Zach Britton has an amazing future in MLB. No matter where he goes, he's the best closer in the game. At the moment I am recording this, he goes 48 for 48 with a .52 ERA, which is the lowest in MLB history, anybody over 50 innings. Now, Jim Johnson, as I go back, as we're recalling this, as soon as his arbitration or contract was getting up to about $10 million, the Orioles traded him. They didn't want anything to do with him. They did not want that $10 million mark, and we traded him. That's what I could see us doing here. But he has two years left on this contract. If you trade him now with two years, you get more. That's what I believe. But do we do that? With Brock struggling at the end of the year, and it seemed like anyone could hit a home run off of him at any time, I say that wouldn't be a smart idea to trade Zach Britton yet. Because what I was reading is that Brad Brock would become the closer from what I was reading. I wouldn't do that. I'd put O'Day as the closer because O'Day has more experience closing games. He seems to be a more clutch and consistent pitcher than Brad Brock, and I'd like Brad Brock in that closer, I mean, setup role. But I would prefer to see Zach Britton stay long term, and it would really hurt to see me leave to see him leave. But we would need to really get some serious prospects for Zach Britton. Now let's move from closing pitching to starting pitching as the last subject of the day here. Thank you if you're still around. Pitching this offseason. Dan Duquette said he really liked the pitching and he really liked where this future was going to, this upcoming season was going to go considering that Chris Tillman, Gallard, Gallardo, I'm sorry, I made someone mad and I call him Gallardo, um, Gallardo, Miley, uh, are all on contract years. He th and Abaldo, I'm sorry, and Abaldo, I forget Abaldo's on the team, are all on contract years. None of them besides Tillman are good pitchers. Miley had a good two games at the end of the year, and that was it. He had about three good games this whole year. Other than that, I wouldn't care if I ever saw him pitch in the MLB again. I would be happy to send him to like a team we play, like the Rays, a lot, just to help us get over on them, because the man... We hit four or five home runs before the first out, first time in like MLB history, and we lost the game. He came out and blew it the next inning. I wouldn't care to see him back. I wouldn't care to see a Baldo back. Uh, I like Gallardo. Gallardo had a good future. I mean, had a good past, and he's been proven to be a good pitcher. So I like Gallardo in a contract year. I can see keeping him as a five or four guy, but this or this off season for the Orioles isn't looking so good for starting pitching. I mean, the top three pitchers are probably Hellickson, Jeremy Hellickson, Andrew Kashner, and Ivan Nova. I'm sorry if I pronounced Ivan wrong. Um, uh, if we get any of them, I know we're close to getting Jeremy Hellickson from the Phillies, but we got Wade Miley instead, yay. I would like to get Nova simply because he knows the AL East and he was doing very successful. But from what I hear, the Yankees, it's looking like he very well might go back to the Yankees. But 
That's what I think about this Oreos offseason. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I will see you later.